So we'll start probably. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhupada. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuri Tamvena Tasmai Shri Guru Guru. Hare Krishna. So Rajesh Prabhu, I'm sorry, like uh, this was not a planned Japa talk and uh, I hope I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, I'll try to share a few points uh, which were uh, kind of shared by His Holiness Bhakti Ashra Vaishnav Swami Maharaj few days back. Uh, and these points were actually uh, put down by uh, Srila Sanatan Goswami. Uh, and uh, these points are kind of very relevant. Uh, and if we apply these points gradually, uh, we will definitely, definitely see tangible improvement in our chanting. So first of that is Mana Sanskaranam. Mana Sanskaranam means we have to bring our mind back to the sound. Man by default is chanchal. And Arjun highlights that in Bhagavad Gita. Manahi chanchalam Krishna. And Krishna acknowledges that fact that yes, I agree that you know it is chanchal. Mind wanders. And we all might have experienced this when we chant or even when we sit in Bhagavatam classes or even you know, when we are performing Aarti or we are attending Aarti, we are singing Kirtan, the mind wanders here and there or whatever we do in our life. It is not just spiritual things, but even you know, when we are studying, when we are driving, when we are in office, the mind keeps wandering. So that is the very nature of the mind, that it wanders. Now, when we are doing this very spiritual practice of japa meditation, the, the important limb of japa medi meditation is trying to attentively hear it, and which is uh, one of the which is one of the offenses which we should avoid, which we have to avoid uh, when we are chanting, that we cannot be inattentive. But then what is to be done with a mind which by its very nature is restless? The thing is, we have to try to bring the mind back to the name. Bring the mind back to the name is try to attentively hear what we are chanting. Try to attentively hear the names. And what can help us with attentive hearing or bringing the mind back is when we are in a prayerful mood. We, we can pray to Krishna before we start chanting, before we you know, start. Or generally what we do is we attend the Mangal Aarti. Uh, we offer uh, different prayers to to Guru and to Krishna. When we are offering those prayers, we can uh, pray to Guru Maharaj, to Srila Prabhupada, to Krishna, that please allow me to hear your names, to be more attentive. And this making a genuine effort to pull the mind back to the name is known as Mana Sanskaranam. And what more can help in addition to being prayerful is if we if we help our intelligence with the spiritual and scriptural content. Because if we read sufficiently, if we hear Bhagavatam regularly, then our spiritual intelligence will also facilitate in bringing the mind back. Because we, we will be reminded of this very fact. We will not flow with the flow of the mind. But we will be more cautious and conscious. Right? So this is one of the, one of the first things which Srila Sanatana Goswami 
highlights that we should be bringing the mind back. Second thing he says is shocham. Shocham means cleanliness. Now, this is a basic culture we follow, not only when we practice a spiritual life, but even otherwise. You know, uh, when we were growing up, our parents, you know, will help us. Uh, and we develop that practice to take bath, to clean our hands, to clean our feet. You know, all those things to wear clean clothes, uh, to cut the nails. So we take all the precautions to make sure that we keep clean. In addition to keeping ourselves physically clean, we also should be mindful that no pollution, no dirt goes in our mind. Because what goes in will also disturb us, will also agitate us. We'll be forced to remember that. So keeping clean means, keeping the mind clean means that not hearing or not polluting our mind with gossips, with prajalpa, with news, you know, the political sports or whatever news it is, you know, watching objectionable uh, materials. Those things, unconsciously, they impact us a lot. You know, I would request you to try, try an experiment that for one week, Whatever may happen, you will not read a newspaper. You will not watch any content which is not Krishna conscious, including like sometimes devotees wonder that, you know, that will keep us kind of uh, isolated from the whole world if you are not aware of what's happening. Yeah, and that may impact many things, you know, it. I, I, I totally agree with that. But not at the risk of, of our spiritual life. Not at the risk of why we were given this body. Because if we are defeating the very purpose of our own existence, then you know we have to see what we need to prioritize. And it's always, you know, uh, we we at at every point of time we have to decide for ourselves, prioritize for ourselves, that what step I am supposed to take uh, to get the work done. Right? There will be many choices, but we we have to take for ourselves. So it is very important that we keep our mind clean by not gossiping about devotees, by not doing any prajalpa, by not, uh, you know, uh, reading newspapers and, you know, any material on any of these social media channels. Uh, because these things are meant to take us away from Krishna. And this is also going to hamper our attentive chanting, right? And similar is monam. Monam means silence. Uh, it's non. It's it's not what it seems to be. Meaning that you know mon vrata, or just don't speak. But jo, but Srila Sanatan Goswami here he's requesting us that don't speak nonsense. Uh, use your tongue for speaking about Krishna, for chanting his names, for being engaged in his service. So Krishna has given us one tongue and two ears. So we should try to use these ears more. You know, if we hear Krishna's name, if we hear his pastimes, you know, if we hear about his devotees, if we use our senses 
in Krishna's service, then that will be very, very helpful for our spiritual life. No material arrangement can help us realize and relish names of Krishna or anything related to Krishna. There is, these things are not mechanical. These things, the whole realization, the whole taste, the whole mellow, the whole bliss is something uh, which is spiritual. And whatever we do, you know, not speaking Prajalpa or even news or whatever, it should be with a, with a clear mind of surrendering ourselves to Krishna. Surrendering ourselves to Krishna such that you know, I am following instructions which are coming in line from parampara of what is good for my own spiritual life. Right? So that is how the whole process is going to help us. Also, uh, the other thing which Srila Sanatana Goswami highlights is trying to focus on the meaning of mantra. That is mantra, mantraat chintanam. So mantraart means the meaning of mantra, the meaning of the Hare Krishna mantra. Chintanam means, you know, meditating on that, remembering that. So Prabhupada uh, often highlights that the very meaning of Hare Krishna Mahamant is, O Radharani, O Krishna, please engage me in your service. Please engage me in your service. And and that's very important uh, because if we develop that attitude, if we uh, if we if we have that attitude of being the servant of Krishna, or rather, I mean, no oh Krishna, please engage me in your service uh, so that I can purify myself. You know, it starts with that, and so that I can I can put myself back in my constitutional position. Uh, that was uh, that we are constitutionally, constitutionally servant of Krishna. Jivere Sarup Hoy Nitya Krishna Das. That our very Sarup is that we are servant of Krishna. And when that opportunity comes to us, that if someone is approaching for service, uh, specifically some authority, you know, then we should try to grab that opportunity. Because, you know, as Krishna told to Arjun, you know, I've already killed everyone. You just have to become my instrument. You know, we should be of the same mindset that never feel proud, uh, never, never be arrogant, that it is I who is doing or you know, if I don't do, this would not have happened. Uh, and never be too lazy to take up services or never to put spiritual services as your last priority, right? Uh, so we have to be in that mood. If we live in that mood, then when we are chanting, we will be in a prayerful mood saying, Oh Radharani, O oh Krishna, please engage me in your service. And if by chance I've done any mistake while I'm serving, while, while I'm involved in your services, please help me so that I don't repeat those mistakes. Please qualify me so that I develop that mindset and attitude and skill that I will be able to serve you nicely. You know, that kind of consciousness we should develop. That Krishna, please protect that I don't use my polluted mind and intelligence, but I use the mind and intelligence which has been purified by the knowledge from scriptures, by the knowledge and teachings which are coming from my Guru Parampara. So trying to, you know, not use the polluted mind and intelligence which we currently have. So that's, uh, you know, again, a very important thing which Srila Sanatan Goswami is highlighting. The next thing is Avya Gratvam. 
avya gratvam means uh, not hurrying up when we are chanting uh, you have to uh, chant uh, with patience in the in a sense of not rushing uh, you know i'm short of time and uh, i have to complete my japa by this time in a sense that uh, in a sense that um, don't try to finish your japa um, you know while not focusing on the names uh, while not being prayerful uh, by by not being able to utter uh, the names clearly these things are very important you know or uh, focusing on time is is helpful in a sense that uh, if we if we drag if we are you know too lazy then we 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 are finishing our japa uh, just casually then it may also deviate our mind so this means avyagratva means that not rushing in trying to finish the japa uh, in less than what you usually or uh, nicely do because every devotee somehow have their own pace but we have to make sure that we are able to chant clearly we are able to hear nicely uh, we are not rushing up because of lack of time or something you know uh, we should do it with our own our own individual natural speed uh, without too much looking at the clock right so um, and if we try to do that and krishna will definitely be impressed you know if we try to do all these practices right the next is anirvedo so shila sanatan goswami highlights that uh, the determination or steadfastness uh, in chanting is also very important it's also very important because when we start chanting usually we don't feel the taste right it is said that you know when we chant we will will be able to relish the names uh, like shila rup goswami describes that when i when i chant i i feel that i should have thousands and millions of tongues i sh- i should have millions of ears and i should have uh, you know millions and thousands of heart so that i can relish the name so that i can relish krishna chanting on my tongue and in my heart like we wonder uh, you know how come shila chetanya shri chetanya mahaprabhu kind of appreciates that, that this glorification by shila rupa goswami is kind of the topmost uh, glorification of holy name he had ever heard so we wonder that you know when will the day come and then we are reminded that we have to have patience in a spiritual life utsaha nischay and dhairya right so uh, that patience that yes that day will come and continue with determination because what happens that when we don't feel that taste instead you know we kind of feel sleepy or of or our mind wanders uh, we sometimes feel that is there any worth continuing uh, this process so krishna is watching us krishna is observing us krishna is seeing that this devotee of mine he although not getting any taste although not being able to relish his mind is wandering you know he is restless uh, 
and he's struggling. But then, with all those things, he's determined, he's consistent in his endeavor. And that pleases Krishna. That pleases Radharani. That we are sincerely trying our best. We are not leaving the process. We continue to endeavor, endeavor, endeavor. That one day I will be able to chant nicely. We have that determination that because my Guru Maharaj has said that this chanting is the most important of the limbs of devotional service. So we have faith in the words of our Guru. We have faith in what our Guru Parampara has given. We have faith what our scriptures want us to do. And we have faith on what Krishna expects from us. So having that faith and continuing with determination is something that that attracts Krishna. You know, it is, it's very common to see that, you know, our mind wanders. We are not able to uh, stop ourselves from being attracted to, uh, you know, do things which are, uh, which are not good for spiritual life, like gossips and news and, you know, uh, other political topics, social topics. We are not able to uh, focus on the meaning or being with the mood, chanting in the mood of gratitude. We we sometimes rush when we chant, right? With all those things, those limitations with us. But if we continue day after day after day, we would have seen in our own spiritual lives that these things undoubtedly, they help us, right? They have, they have helped us so far and then, and then they, will, they will continue to help us. I'm sorry. So day after day, we will see that we are seeing, we are experiencing that uh, my taste is increasing. What my Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, Guru Parampara told about the process, told about how you know you will gradually relish things that is happening. Gradually, I am able to see that my mind is in control. I am able to chant nicely. So all these things, when we experience, our faith increases. And we then gradually try to put more and more effort into, into spiritual practices of which chanting is the most important. Now, what also facilitates our chanting is uh, okay. So, what also helps in our chanting is reading of scriptures, as 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 was highlighted that it also substantially helps to to stop our mind from wandering. So, if we read scriptures nicely study scriptures scrutinizingly and try to regularly hear Bhagavatam. And all these things, if we do them in association of devotees. So, so most of us in this call, you know, are professionals, are grastas, you know, who have, who have family to take care, who have to go to office, uh, so it becomes really challenging. But even at your home, if, if the family 
can spare some time to read together because reading and studying alone is good but if we read and study in a small group that helps even more you know just yesterday i was sitting with his grace bhurijan prabhu ji and uh, he asked me that with all the services you have uh, are you able to read consistently and regularly so i said no i am not able to uh, read uh, and i shared that on an average i read half an hour you know individual reading but on daily basis what we are doing is we are reading bhagavatam we are discussing bhagavatam in a group so all the leaders of different departments and and all of the devotees who uh, who are full time and they are interested they come daily and then we have one uh, one devotee uh, his grace bakmit prabhu he also comes daily almost daily and he has very very deep understanding of shrivat bhagavatam and we then you know he helps us so this is the practice which we do uh, you know almost daily other than sundays uh, so he said then that's that's what it is actually so if we if we also do that like on weekends we go to temple or temple centers and on weekdays if within our own families or even you know if if some devotees can meet if they stay nearby close by if they can regularly gather in study that will that will help us a lot to keep our mind focused to be more attentive in chanting to relish chanting so here uh, i will like to end uh, this talk and i'll uh, like to open the floor if you have any questions or comments hari krishna prabhu ji dhanyavad naam prabhu ji for uh, wonderful uh, nectarian wisdom on these three uh, words um, so prabhu ji my question is like say um, i see that uh, my mind tries to cheat me um, so uh, with this um, you talked about this newspaper right so mind says no you try to read this newspaper with a devotee's lens Uh, so that you will come to know that yes you will be again reminded that you it's it's a dukhale ashashwatam and you will feel gratitude about that okay yes you are connected to this krishna consciousness so this, this is like sometimes mind says that and, and obviously there is a fear of isolation you said so prabhu ji yes uh, definitely it, it impacts our consciousness so i mean what should be our way uh, to deal such things see again this is a mind's game this is this is you know mind's game please remember those days when we felt that you know if i if i come to krishna consciousness what people will think what my relatives will say what my friends will say and gradually as we associate more with devotees we are able to overcome that you know we shy in putting tilak we shy in putting uh, you know kanthi and 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 the shikha and all those things keeping short hairs you know but in association of devotees we get faith we get determination we get better understanding and and gradually we are able to overcome those hurdles right our mind game similarly you know i would say you know it helped me personally a lot i tell you very frankly uh, this this has helped me a lot uh, since the time i have stopped reading the world is still going i am able to focus more on my uh, spiritual things uh, my life has improved uh, i am i don't know what's happening in the world in in sense of uh, you know sports or politics or uh, what's happening with the war you know if sometimes it comes or oh, uh, the condition of um, 
people in Israel, the devotees is bad. Then I just ask them, oh, the war is still going, which is fine. You know, as devotee, people understand. And it is better that we don't share these things with non-devotees. You know, you just hear and stop. You, But, you know, sometimes when if this comes up within devotee, then you can ask. And every devotee understands that, fine, you know, this devotee may not be reading news or whatever. And that's fine. And sometimes also, you know, uh, these movies and dramas and uh, those uh, things which come on the television, those serials, uh, people, uh, you know, they talk about things and we don't know what's happening, which new movie has come, which serial is going on and all those things. And we feel bad and we feel isolated, you know, when we start our Krishna consciousness. But gradually we understand that, you know, it's very important for us not to expose ourselves to those things. And then, you know, with association, with proper understanding, we continue. Similarly, you know, I would say personally it has helped me a lot and you can also give a try. Mm -hmm. Navindu, yeah. So there is a question, how so do we... Knowledge. Yeah. So is is that fine, Abhinu Prabhuji? Uh, yes, Prabhuji, it is good. And definitely I, I will I will try it from today itself. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Yes. Pranam. Pranam. So there is a question uh, from Jyoti Mataji. How do we feel Krishna is watching us and present in our surroundings? Oh, Krishna is watching us always. Whatever Krishna is watching us always. That we should know. You know, from so many scriptural verses, we see that Krishna... <laughs> uh, and now it is easy, actually. You know why? Because we are in the world uh, where every every uh, everywhere it's written, you are under CCTV surveillance. Right? And, and we become conscious. Uh, in our temple you will see CCTV everywhere, you know. So, and, and in our corporate world also. So we, we are getting used to it. Similarly, uh, Krishna's CCTVs are the moon and the sun, the sky, the air, you know, everything, all the demigods, uh, they are Krishna's eyes and Krishna is himself watching and observing his devotees, right? So, and if we if we develop that consciousness, uh, definitely our uh, spiritual life improves. Uh, that whatever I am doing, Krishna is actually observing me. He's watching me. Uh, yeah, that will help us. Uh, Rajesh Prabhu, is there any other question there? Yeah, Prabhu, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Yeah, then Dr. Nam Prabhuji. Uh, actually, Prabhuji, uh, a uh, nice session uh, when we, where we got to know about how things are impacting our chanting, very small things like watching news and all. And we really feel that we will be out of the uh, our circle or social group if we are not uh, indulging in such discussions. But what I uh, majorly is facing, Prabhuji, is a problem that if I'm relishing some nice lecture or devotee association uh, a day before then next day again uh, while i'm chanting i'm getting again and again those thoughts that uh, look that devotee is so nice the uh, all positive thoughts maybe not negative somehow avoiding those negative thoughts but positive are again and again you know but that disturbs my chanting so i'm out of my chanting again and then after some time i get back so that is happening so is how can i avoid that because i feel probably that is again and again disturbing me a lot so you are thinking of uh, you know the devotee you met and the, the temple those things right yeah probably whatever i talk to the devotees or uh, okay. if we are even uh, having a small uh, you know like jokes are being done or something about like you should do this and that whatever we are talking those thoughts are coming in again and again to my mind and i'm getting disturbed okay yeah so anything for example 
when we are chanting, we try to, you know, focus more on the name, right? That is our aim. And feeling gratitude towards Krishna and Prabhupada and requesting uh, uh, Radharani and Krishna that please engage me in my service, in your services, please engage me in your services and all those things and anything which comes. Uh, but then there can be a gradation, right? So if, for example, if we if we are reading or hearing too much of um, uh, anything like news or sports news or whatever, uh, then you know, uh, the politics comes in while we are chanting uh, the political things or anything. So it's it's much better uh, to to think about devotees, uh, to think about our services, uh, to think about our association with devotees, uh, then to think about politicians or political matters or any so-called social matters or any so called even about about relatives right so it's 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 devotees are actually uh, you know non different from krishna in a sense that they are devotees of krishna so when we are thinking about devotees in a way we are thinking about, about krishna when it comes to uh, uh, you know if if our conversation with devotees was was, uh, was not a spiritual you know fully a spiritual then Gradually, we should try to be more cautious that, you know, we will not be doing prajalpa. And as we, as we go deeper in more hearing, consistent in hearing Bhagavatam, in reading Prabhupada's books, consistent in our spiritual practices, you will see for yourself, you will feel that change. Also, we have to be careful that on the name of devotee association, what we are doing. Devotee association means associating with sincere, serious devotees. Devotee association means hearing from devotees. Devotee association means implementing what we are hearing. Devotee association does not mean uh, that, you know, just talking anything, you know, what's new in the market, you know, which clothes to buy, buy, where to buy them from, you know. It's it's also fine, you know, day-to-day -day things, but we we have to, for ourselves, understand what actually devotee association is. So, even if that, that discussion or those services comes, it's, it's not that much of a problem, you know, in comparison to, you know, all other political things or all other things which impact us. They impact us but badly actually. Okay, okay Prabhu. Like it's mostly like when someone is inspire, uh, inspiring other devotees or telling that uh, this service should be done in this way, your mood, mood should be that way. So those things are coming in again and again and I'm planning that next time I'll implement these things into this way because that devotee has guided me well. So those are the things. So uh, that's not down, downgrading myself, Prabhuji, is it? Yeah. So if those things are coming, na, uh, you should you should tell your mind, yes, this is one important thing, but I will think about it, how to implement, how to plan my life after I finish my chanting. Right? And you make sure you do that. Because what happens? You know, these things, they tend to come when we are chanting. But then after finishing our chant, we never focus on those things. Yeah, so, so what we have to do? Tell your mind, this is the time I am with Krishna, right? I am in my prayers, and I will definitely think about those things. They are very important for my spiritual life as well. But I'll think after I am done with my chant. And you do that. You can write it somewhere. Yeah, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much for guidance. Rajesh Prabhu, is there any other question? No, Prabhuji. Thank you. So, no so uh, can, can we end the talk? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you.